Hello, and welcome to the Parents as Learning Coaches edition of the Steve Barkley Ponders Out Loud podcast. Parents and caregivers play many different roles, and even sometimes conflicting roles, as they support children's development. The pandemic has shown a light on the importance of parents supporting learners. In this podcast, I'll share my experiences as a teacher, educator, parent, grandparent, and continuous learner that can support your coaching efforts. Co-creating a Creative Vibe, Part 2. Nurturing Creativity Every Day. What matters the most? This is the second part of a three-part series for parents and kids around nurturing creativity with Dr. Joanne Foster. In part one, Dr. Foster provided an understanding of what creativity is and why it's important. In this episode, she will explore nurturing creativity. I strongly recommend catching episode one to set the stage for the strategies that are shared in this upcoming podcast. Thanks, Dr. Foster, for the understanding and explanations that you shared in the first episode. I really especially appreciated the, uh, the the thoughts about effort and energy as a component of creativity. So let's pick it up and and, and move on. Um, what what factors have a bearing on our creative output, whether we're students at school or parents at home or work or elsewhere? Thanks. It's nice to be back. And definitely, I'm glad you're picking up on this idea of effort and energy. And also, perhaps I should mention time and patience because they play into it as well. But there are other factors that have a bearing on children's creative output, no matter where they might be. And uh, as you know, that might be anywhere from a beach to a lake to a mountaintop to a city to a country fair. So the the response to this question is is, is broad based because learning and creativity and the promise of creativity can happen just anywhere. But what you really need to have is desire, because I, as I mentioned in the first podcast, creativity is a choice. You have to have encouragement from other people so that you can see a little bit of progress so that you can know that you're heading in the right direction. It's important to have flexibility, to be able to move with whatever is happening around you. So that if, for example, you're outside and you're appreciating nature or, or using your senses to really get a, a, a feel for what's around you and all of a sudden it starts to pour, it doesn't mean you have to go in. It just means that you have to look at what's around you through a different lens and maybe from under an umbrella as well. So, so you need that desire, you need encouragement, you need flexibility, and you also need knowledge. You have to have some basis to understand what it is that you're, you, you want to do. So if I want to make a flying machine, I have to know a little bit about flying and the aerodynamics and, and, and what an airplane looks like. If I want to make a, a mushroom soup, a creative mushroom soup, I have to know, you know, not to put in a poisonous mushroom, um, it, you know, basic stuff that you, you want to build from. So your, your, your knowledge base is, is also an important and provides a foundation from which to build. So that, that lens, what it is that you're seeing and how you see it, but also what it is that you know and how you're going to, to build from upon it. I do a lot of work with uh, questioning. And as I was uh, listening to you, uh, those comments you just made, it's striking me that asking questions is part of building or tapping your creativity. Yes. And there are questions you can ask yourself, but there are also questions that the parents can ask children about, you know, what is it that you want to know? What is it that you need to know? What is it that you already know? How can you build upon it creatively and effectively and critically and, and collaboratively? And by the way, the best types of questions are not necessarily yes and no questions. Because if you ask someone a yes and no question, are you creative? Yes, no, you're going to get an answer. Yes, no. And that's not very creative. What you really want to do is ask questions that make people think. So questions such as who, what, where, when, why, and how. Questions that have open-ended possible answers. Questions that encourage kids to develop and create their own questions as a result of, of your starting point. So yes, inquiry is hugely important. And I think curiosity is 
hugely important as well. There's, there's um, an author by the name of William Arthur Ward who said that curiosity is the wick in the candle of learning. And I think that that's really a lovely way to put it, that by asking questions and, and choosing to wonder about our world and by really tapping into our creativity through curiosity, we become richer as a result. It's a, a, a great story uh, is coming to my mind that I read about a, uh, a scientist who won the Pulitzer Prize. And when he got the prize, he said he, he owed it to his mother. And he said that the reason was that every day when he came home from school, she asked the same question. And her question was, what was the best question you asked at school today? <laughs> so Excellent. kind of the reverse of when we're asking kids what they learned to instead ask what they what they what they pondered. And, and I'll take that one one step further. I was at a conference. Um, actually, it was for um, gifted learners. And they had a, a manifesto of 10 different things, 10 different rules for, for kids to think about in terms of their learning. And one of them was to consider the most important thing that they learned each day. And I put up my hand and I said, I don't necessarily agree with this particular item on the manifesto. And everybody in the room is sort of turning around and going like, what do you mean you don't agree with that? You know, how can you not agree that it's important to, to focus on the most important thing that you learned each day? And I said, why are you limiting it to one? Why is it only one important thing? Why isn't it, what is the most creative, the most um, unusual, um, the most important things that you learned each day? So, so don't, don't limit yourself. Ask questions, find out all you can, and then build as much as you can from there. So why is it that we sometimes struggle with creativity and uh, you get some suggestions for how we can overcome some of those difficulties we might have? So, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll start with about 10 quick reasons why kids or for that matter, adults might struggle with creativity. And I'm just going to whip through them just to give you a sense of, of why it's not always like that light bulb going over the head that, that creativity does in fact, require energy and effort. So the, the first thing that can sometimes impede creativity is scrutiny. Having someone staring over your shoulders or, or telling you what to do, that can be a real downer. Rigidity, not having the, um, the flexibility that I mentioned earlier, not, not having the, the feel that you can stretch yourself in different directions and try different things, but being confined inside that box can be a bit of a struggle for kids who especially want to, to take next steps. A third reason why people struggle with creativity is because they're impatient. They, they don't have the sense that they have the time that they would like to invest in it, that other people are waiting for them, that they, there's a, um, a limit to what they can do. And so they have to stop and they, they can't push themselves to the next level. A fourth reason why people struggle with creativity is a lack of confidence. The, the fact that they, they doubt their abilities, they're uncertain what's going to happen. They're afraid somebody's going to, to comment or, you know, put them in a position where they're going to feel uncomfortable or embarrassed because they've come up with this really incredibly crazy idea and, and, and not everybody appreciates wacky or zany ideas, right? Another reason why people struggle is because they feel alone or they feel lost or they feel isolated and they may feel that they want additional input or help from others and yet maybe they don't necessarily know how to ask for it. Fatigue can be a problem too. Being tired can really zap your creative energy so we need to make sure that, that kids get enough rest and, uh, and also nourishment and, and um, whatever else it takes for them to feel healthy and, and um, ready to, to think creatively and be creative. Little or no progress can cause people to be less creative. If you don't see yourself moving forward, if you don't have some sense that you're, 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 you're making a difference in your own thoughts or in, in what's going on around you, um, that can cause you to be less creative. Unfair expectations would be something else. If somebody is expecting you do this, do that, do the other, and you better do a really good job and you better have it done by tomorrow. Uh, and it better be colorful and it better have um, something different than what you've done before. Those, those kinds of things can really impede creativity. So making sure that, that there's some clarity 
in, in the expectations and that they're fair and, and reachable. And a basic one is not having the provisions you need, not having the materials, whether it's equipment, supplies, musical instruments, whatever. So those, that, that's just a list of different reasons why kids or adults might struggle with creativity. But I, I think the most important one, and I saved it for the last, you want to guess? Should I put you on the spot? Yeah, you got me on the spot. That, that was such a I long list. Okay, good. I, I got, I, I, okay. I, I, you know what? Go, go ahead and give me the last one be, before I tell you what's going through my mind. Okay. Okay. So you got to think creatively here, but the most important thing in terms of, of, of people who struggle with creativity is that they don't value it. They oh, don't nice. understand the importance of it. They don't understand the benefits of it. They don't understand that it can totally, totally change your life. It can change how you look at things, your lens, your perspectives, your, your attitudes. Um, it, it, not caring about creativity means you're not going to pull it out of your pocket or wherever it is you keep it in your brain, in your, in your, wherever. If you care about it, then you're going to do something about it. And so people who struggle with creativity may need help understanding the value of it. Investment. And um, the, the investment agency. Creativity yes. takes work. Of course, it does. It takes it takes work. Why would I invest the work if I didn't believe there was value that would come out of it? So that makes total sense exactly. now that you've laid it out for me. Exactly. And, and, and when we're talking about work, it doesn't have to be, you know, heavy duty work. You don't have to put on overalls and you don't have to grab a hammer or, or whatever it might be. We're talking about um, sitting down and, and enjoying the process and working through it and thinking and percolating and laughing and, and, and brainstorming with others and, um, and, and building on the skill sets that matter, whether it's organization or time management or um, learning to set goals, basically challenging yourself and seeing what's in the environment around you and, and not only seeing, but smelling and tasting and feeling and, and hearing and appreciating all of that. So yeah, it, it, it is work, but it's work in a good sense. Fair to say that um, mistakes are part of it. Yes. And that's how we learn. We learn by figuring out what we need to overcome. If we keep doing the same thing again and again and again, we're not going to make any mistakes, but we're also not going to go anywhere. I have to be open to, to it not working in order to, uh, to to tap my creativity to end up with what might work. Correct. So you, 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 want to, you want to avoid certain things. I mean, you want to avoid things that are going to be so, so difficult that you're going to get turned off of doing it, but you don't want it so easy either that you know you're going to be bored or it's going to be repetitive or it's not going to be challenging enough so you have to find that sweet spot that that place in the middle where you're going to be able to move ahead comfortably perhaps with some help but still feel good at it, about what it is that you're accomplishing along the way so that goes back to that idea of having you know progress and and sensing that there's there's something good happening so it's sounding like the environment uh, that we're working in is, uh, the, well, I say working, learning, playing, whatever one of those verbs I want to use, but, but, but the, the environment's going to, going to have an impact. So what should we be looking for in, in, in our environment? I'll focus on two things. So the first is flexibility. Remember I talked about going out into nature and it can be sunny, it can be raining, it can be snowing, it can be uh, a windstorm. Uh, it could be day, it could be night, it could be whenever. So that flexibility of, of taking what's around you and rolling with it a little bit. Uh, how do I need to change in order to be able to interact with that environment and, and make it meaningful for me? What guidance might I need? What reinforcement might I need? What knowledge might I need in order to make, make the most of, of that environment that I'm experiencing at, at any particular time. So I think in the last in the last segment of the podcast, I talked about getting out there and, and, and appreciating the stars. So let's take it to the next step and let's let's look at some sunrises or sunsets and 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 how does that environment change from one day to the next day? Why is the sun sometimes red and sometimes yeah why is it sometimes 
a fiery pink sky and other times it's it's just a sapphire blue and and like what is it that i need to know what is it that i need to learn in order to be able to understand my environment and rule with the flexibility that everything is changing all the time i'm changing as a person the people i meet will be changing from day to day the environment will be changing from day to day everything's in flux so so that flexibility is really an important part of understanding your environment and um, benefiting creatively from it. The second piece of the environment that really matters has to do with it being respectful. Respectful of, of you um, as a learner and you also being respectful of other people who are in your environment. So what their choices and preferences are, what their needs are, what um, their priorities might be. So um, for example, one child in your group and again, I'm talking, you know, for kids here, one, one kid might, might love duct tape and somebody else might like boxes and baskets and somebody else might like ducks and somebody else might be really enamored with trucks and vehicles and things that move and hockey might, and sports might be the passion of somebody else. And, 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 and what, what do they want to know about these things? What are the history of these things? How are they used? What sort of artistic renderings can they do? Um, what sort of stories do they know about these things? How can you share? How can you draw? How can you write? How can you sing? Uh, you know, how can you be respectful of other people's creative interests and use those to um, ignite your own and, and share? So, so flexibility it's really important in an environment and, and respect for, for what's around you and for what other people are enjoying and doing. Um, those create inviting and um, exciting kinds of environments. And, um, and that's what we want for all kids. Wow. 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 You, um, you, you just turned on my uh, creative light bulb. <laughs> the two words there are so powerful of, of uh, flexible and, uh, and, and respectful. And uh, I, I can tell you, I, I'm going to be doing some writing and podcast following up from having listened to you on, on, on those two words. Just today, I, I started working on, on a piece for, for teachers with the, uh, with, with the start of the, the, the school year and, and uh, what's the message they want students to get about the time that they're going to be spending with the teacher. And boy, I can't think of any more powerful message for kids to get at the start of the year that I'm, I'm going to be working with a teacher who's, uh, who's flexible and respectful. And uh, for us to have homes that are flexible and respectful and communities, and uh, you really lay out the key words there for how we are in community with each other. I, I, I'm, I'm glad you say that. And I, I just want to add a third word. And I think that it comes of being flexible and respectful, and that is to be kind. Because if we're being kind, then we're keeping in mind that we need to have respect for other people's ideas and viewpoints and be flexible to accept them and understand them and um, enable them to be creative and to learn. I mean, we, we're, 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 we're all in this together, right? So whether, whether it's a classroom, whether it's a family environment, whether it's a community, yeah, flexibility and, um, and respect and kindness. It's almost like a kind is the uh, is the action that comes out of it. So if I'm flexible and respectful, the actions I'm going to take are going to be kind. It, it's true, and I but I, I think also we have to be careful not to use buzzwords in ways that we take them, you know, loosely or take them for granted or or just say, you know, everybody, let's be kind. You know, you see people with posters all over the place that say be kind. Like I, I think we have to take the time to understand what underlies it it's it's it doesn't just happen it has to happen because people are thoughtful about it yeah are there uh, are there other pieces you'd want to label for uh how parents and kids can in- encourage each other's creativity sure so i'm going to give you three points here and and i and i hope that you know kids will think about these three points very carefully because i i don't say them lightly i'm i'm saying them with great reverence the first has to do with willingness if you want to be creative you have to be willing to think and to explore in new and unexpected ways to question and to to not necessarily accept the here and now exactly as it is but to 
to be playful, to be curious, to um, take the time to develop new ideas. So, so willingness is, is the first key. The second key is to look for different outlets, whether it's through the arts, whether it's through um, you know, music, writing, dance, physical activities, gymnastics, technology, whatever it might be, look for those different outlets and, and ways to express your creativity and, and grab at them, seize them. Maybe it's in the bathtub. Maybe it's while you're sitting in the back seat of the car. Um, get off the sofa. Take away the device that you might be looking at, the iPad or whatever. Uh, appreciate what's around you. Look for outlets and ways to express your creativity. So willingness, looking for outlets, and then finally, strengthening your connections with other people. That's a huge way to encourage and support one another's creativity because creativity often emerges from collaborating and from problem solving with other people. So any kind of network of support that you might be able to pull together can enhance your self-expression and your creativity. So you might want to, for example, consider reading clubs or library programs or community center activities. There are lots of online options, which of course need, you know, a certain amount of supervision, but they're, they're out there. Uh, mentorships, volunteering, just finding ways to connect with like-minded others and even people who are not so like-minded because then you see different perspectives that you might not necessarily have thought of. So willingness, looking for outlets and strengthening connections. Those are my three keys for today. As, as I was listening there, the, the diversity uh, was running through my head. So the difference of, uh, of the people that you get a chance to interact to can, uh, can expand your creativity. Exactly. I'm, I'm interacting with you and hopefully this will get out there and expand other people's creativity. You like to do podcasts. I like to write. Somebody else likes to, to sing a song. The little nine-year-old girl I was talking about the other day likes to do upside down flips. Everybody's creativity is, is generated in, in a different way. And I think that we, um, again, we need to be respectful and flexible and just embrace and celebrate and, and be as creative as we can be every day. Any day that ends in Y is a good day to be creative. <laughs> well, thanks, Dr. Foster. You want to set the stage for folks as to what they'll find tuning into the third session? Sure. Um, I'm going to talk about how we can strengthen creativity even more, some specific strategies, and, um, and I'll give some final takeaways as well. Thanks. And a reminder to folks of the easiest way to uh, find you and follow up and connect with you. Sure. My website is joannefoster.ca. And uh, there's a very big resource page filled with articles and information and also information about my seven books. And I do write about creativity within those books in different ways, shapes, and forms. So I welcome anybody to have a look at that at my column at the Creativity Post and uh, certainly to contact me as well. There's a contact page where um, they can reach out and uh, get in touch with me directly if they want to chat, if they want a presentation, if they just want to know more. JoannePoster.ca. Thank you. And we'll uh, we'll be sure to uh, to post that in the lead into the podcast. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for uh, for expanding uh, expanding my thinking and turning on the light bulbs for me. My pleasure. Have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to Steve Barkley Ponders Out Loud on iTunes and Podbean, and please remember to rate and review us on iTunes. I also want to hear what you're pondering. You can find me on Twitter at Steve Barkley. Or send me your questions and find my videos and blogs at barclaypd.com.